Just now, at the company door? Who were you with? Is that why you ditched our dinner date? Is she your mistress? What? Are you stalking me now? I made it clear to you that I have to meet a client this afternoon. And you know she's my secretary, right? I know it's wrong to cancel our lunch date, so I promised to take you out to dinner tonight, didn't I? Why are you so suspicious of me that you would follow me? What? Don't you dare deny it! There are no customers around. If she's meeting a customer, why does the other bitch have to dress so seductively? And you even opened the car door for her? I was already heading in that direction when you called to cancel our date. Now I think know what's going on. Alright, where did you end up following me? I did open the car door for her, but it was in the back seat. My driver is sick today, so I had to drive myself. But I didn't want her sitting in the extra seat, which is reserved only for you, so I opened the back door for her. I didn't even notice what she was wearing. See? All you men are the same. You all have adulterous thoughts and you're all ready to come up with some bullshit lies. Why have you suddenly become a different person? Why do you always accuse me of trying to deceive you? I've done everything I can to make you believe in me. And it seems like it's all pointless. Oh, don't you dare ask me. Ask yourself first. You've been so distant. Your changes have been so significant. How am I supposed to pretend that nothing is happening? Two nights ago, you were at my house and you got a phone call. What did you do next? Yeah, I answered the phone. No! You got up and stormed out of the room. You went outside and sat in your car so I couldn't hear the conversation. But I know for sure it was a woman because you kept laughing and your eyes were full of love. Taylor, how many times do I have to tell you that it was a business call? Yeah, yeah, I know it was your secretary, but she's never called you that late. And you never excuse yourself to take a call, even when it's business related. So why, after talking on the phone with your secretary, when I wanted to see your phone, did you insist on refusing? What are you saying about privacy? Invasion of privacy or something? You looked really suspicious back then, dodging my questions about your conversation with your secretary. If you really have nothing to do with her, then why don't you show me your phone? Because my phone contains a lot of confidential information that's extremely important to the company. I told you many times that we're just workmates. Nothing more, nothing less. Besides, I believe in respecting your privacy, never checking your phone or controlling friends you hang out with. Maybe you should show me the same respect. Oh, so she's not just your secretary, but also your friend? What kind of friend are you two? Best friends? Soulmates? Or friends with benefits? Come on, Taylor. You know well that I didn't mean it that way. Can you please calm down? I'm not having an affair with any other woman but you. I only love you, and you're the woman I want to spend my life with. Then last Thursday you told me you decided to stay home instead of coming over. Yes, but I did say I went to my mother's house. We had some important things to talk about. But that night was our movie date, remember? We promised to always be together every Thursday night. And during our six months of dating, no matter how busy you were, you never missed a date with me. Plus, your mother always goes to bed by 9 p.m. And it only takes 30 minutes to drive from her place to yours. But I stood outside your door until 11.30 and you were nowhere to be seen. How are you going to explain this? My car had a flat tire in the middle of the road. And I had to wait over an hour for the mechanic to come and fix it. Then I stopped by the gas station and bought some snacks. That's it. There were no other girls involved, unless you count my mother. Listen, Taylor, I don't have time to talk right now. My client is here, and I can't handle this business and text you at the same time. We'll talk about this later tonight. That's impossible. You can't do this to me. If you can't give me a reasonable answer right now, I'll assume that you and your secretary are dating. Don't wait until I lose my mind and burst into the room causing a scene. Until then, you'll only have yourself to blame for making me suspicious. I'm standing right in front of the restaurant that you and your secretary went into. What? Are you kidding me? You can't come in here. This is a very crucial international customer. If I lose this contract, I'll lose my job. You know how hard I've worked to finish this project. Can't you control your irrational jealousy for just a few moments and not ruin all my efforts? If you want me to stay out of the restaurant, then prove it to me. What do I have to prove when I've done absolutely nothing wrong? I've already answered all your questions. What else do you want me to do? 
I'm sorry, Taylor, but I'll apologize to you later. Right now, my client is here. I can't continue this conversation anymore. Just go home, okay? If you're going to be stubborn like this, I'll have to resort to methods I'd rather not use. What? Are you playing with my feelings? Then don't blame me when I uncover the truth on my own. What the hell? Why won't the restaurant staff let me in to find you? They said that their VIP customer asked them to block me from entering because I'm a stalker. Was it you? Joey! Where are you, Joey? You were supposed to be at my house by now. I explicitly told you that we're going shopping tonight, didn't I? Taylor, today is my best friend Josh's wedding. I told you about it last week. Why are you asking me this now? Besides, when did I ever promise to go shopping with you? What? Are you kidding me? Don't you remember what you promised me? I called you this morning to discuss our plans and you said okay. No, Taylor. I just remember you asking if I wanted crepes for breakfast, and I said okay to that. Oh, really? So if that's the case, then I must have been imagining things and didn't actually ask you yet. Huh. Silly me. But fine. Just get your sorry ass over here and pick me up. We're going to the mall and I'm getting the dress that I want. But, honey, as I mentioned earlier, today is my best friend's wedding, and I'm the main groomsman. The wedding hasn't happened yet, so how do you expect me to ditch it and go shopping with you? What? So you're saying your friend's wedding is more important than ours? You think it's okay to leave me alone at home while you have all the fun? Why aren't you interested in me? Taylor, don't talk as if I'm purposely abandoning you. I asked you multiple times if you wanted to come along. And even before I left, I asked again. But you kept refusing and getting pissed off because I interrupted you while you were painting your nails. I hate to say it, but today is the most important day for my best friend, and I need to be there for him. We'll have plenty of days to go shopping, won't we? Oh, come on! Your friend will only have one wedding in his life, won't he? If you miss this chance, there will be another opportunity, or even two. Come on, Joey. Get your ass back here with me. If we wait any longer, that stunning dress will be sold out. What are you talking about? Saying he'll only have one wedding? Are you implying that my best friend won't be happy? This shit is getting more and more outrageous. If you really want to buy that dress, then go ahead and buy it yourself and I'll give you the money. I'm not going back to your place today. Are you mad at me? Just because of your best friend? Why don't you come to my place tonight? So you can have an affair with some girl at the wedding, is that what you want? Stop it, Taylor. We discussed this just a few days ago. I've told you everything, and I even gave you my phone to check. I'm completely faithful. Remember, you admitted that your insecurities and overthinking were the root of the problem. You promised to change and not suspect me of having an affair again. It's only been three days, and you've already forgotten? I... I'm sorry, I, I just misspoke. Please don't be mad at me, okay? But can you please come back here with me? I'm feeling really sad and I just want you by my side right now. Honey, what's making you so sad? I feel like you don't care about me anymore. You make me feel like I'm not as important as your friends. It's hard to believe that you love me when you always prioritize spending time with them. I wish you would care more about me and always be by my side. Why do you spend so much time with your friends? Every time I think about it, I feel like you never truly loved me. And it makes me so sad. Oh, no, baby, I love you. I truly do. But it's not like I'm always leaving you to hang out with my friends. Since we started dating, I've been spending a lot less time with them. I only see them once a month, and I don't think that's too much. Do you want me to completely cut them off and never have any time with my friends? Yes, that's exactly what I want. I want you to always be within my sight so that you can never leave me or deceive me. Uh, I understand now why you always say you're my woman instead of you're the only one I love. It's because you're gay, right? And you're secretly in love with one of your male friends, using me as a cover to hide your true feelings from others? Is that the only explanation you could come up with? 
Your imagination is truly impressive. I am not gay, and I'm not in love with any man. Why can't you just see it as a casual hangout between friends? No, that's the only logical reason I can think of in this situation. If you were just normal friends, you wouldn't need to meet once a month. Don't lie to me! Do you want to isolate me from my friends? What's gotten into you? Sometimes I really wonder if your brain functions like a normal person's. How can it conjure up such absurd, confusing, delusional, and ridiculous stories like this? I assure you once again, I am completely faithful. I'm not having an affair with anyone, man or woman. Does that finally satisfy you or not? Not at all. I want you to install a locator app that connects to my phone so I can track you regularly. That way I can be completely sure that you haven't done anything wrong with me. Taylor, I understand that you're feeling insecure, but asking me to install a locator app on my phone is an invasion of my privacy. It's not healthy for either of us to resort to such extreme measures just to alleviate your doubts. How can you say that? If you have nothing to hide, then why are you so resistant to this idea? I just want to feel safe and secure in our relationship. Trust isn't built on constant surveillance, Taylor. It's built on open communication, understanding, and respecting each other's boundaries. Monitoring my every move won't bring us closer. It'll only create a toxic environment of suspicion and control. But I can't help but doubt you. I've seen the signs the inconsistencies in your behavior. I need to know the truth, even if it means resorting to extreme measures. Enough, Taylor. I can't take this anymore. Your constant accusations, mistrust, and wild imagination are driving me insane. I've been patient. I've explained myself over and over again, and I've tried to reassure you. But it seems like nothing I say or do can satisfy your doubts. You think this is easy for me? Seeing you with other people, constantly questioning your loyalty, it tears me apart. I love you so much, Joey, and all I want is to feel secure in a relationship. Love isn't supposed to feel like this, Taylor. It shouldn't be filled with doubt, jealousy, and constant accusations. It's suffocating me. I can't breathe under the weight of your insecurities. Well, maybe if you were more transparent, more open about your actions, I wouldn't have to resort to such extreme thoughts. Maybe if you truly valued our relationship, you would understand my fears. I have been transparent. I've given you access to my phone, I've answered your questions, and I've been patient with your insecurities. But it's never enough for you. You twist my words, create scenarios in your mind, and jump to conclusions without any evidence. Because I can't bear the thought of losing you, Joey. The fear of being betrayed or of being left behind, it consumes me. I don't want to feel this way, but I can't control my thoughts. Then maybe it's time you seek professional help, Taylor. This level of insecurity and mistrust is not healthy for either of us. We can't continue like this, constantly battling over unfounded suspicions. Are you suggesting that I'm crazy? That there's something wrong with me? No, that's not what I'm saying. I just think that talking to a therapist or counselor could help you work through these issues. They can provide guidance and support in a way that I can. not So now you're saying I'm not capable of handling our relationship on my own? That I need someone else to fix me? Taylor, I can't bear the constant doubts and lack of trust anymore. It's taking a toll on both of us, and I don't see a way forward unless we address these underlying issues. I think it's best if we break up. No, Joey, please! I promise I'll change. I'll do whatever it takes to rebuild the trust between us. I can't imagine my life without you. Please give me another chance. Taylor, I've given you chances before, and we've reached this point again. It's not fair to either of us to continue in a relationship filled with doubts and surveillance. I need to prioritize my own mental and emotional well-being. Joey, I'm begging you. I love you so much, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make things right. I'll seek therapy, work on my insecurities, and learn to trust you again. Just please don't leave me. It's not an easy decision for me, Taylor. 
I care about you deeply, but we can't keep going in circles like this. I need time to heal and find peace of mind. If you're truly committed to changing and rebuilding trust, then I'll give you some time to prove it. <sighs> Thank you, Joey. I won't let you down. I'll work on myself and our relationship with everything I have. Please believe in me. Taylor, what the hell just happened? My secretary was attacked right outside my office, with paint sprayed on her and her hair grabbed and slapped on her face. And when I checked the security camera footage, it was you. Why would you do such a thing? What? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm at the shopping mall right now. Why would I come to your company and do something like that? But honestly, she deserves it. She's always wearing provocative clothes to seduce other men. Are you seriously denying it? I'm certain it was you, because the person had a shell necklace with a pearl on it. And there's only one necklace like that in the world. How can you be so sure it was me when the person had a face mask and sunglasses on, covering their face? Are you accusing me without any proof? I'm sure it was you, because I zoomed in on the footage, and I saw the necklace that I made for you as a birthday gift. It's unmistakably you. And I never mentioned anything about the culprit wearing a mask and sunglasses. So how do you know that? That's... I mean... It must have been someone else. You're just trying to frame me. So what's wrong with that? You've deceived me first. I have seen with my own eyes and have the full proof of you and her going to a jewelry store and buying rings. Are you going to propose to her while you're still dating me, you jerk? What? Are you still following me? No, I guarantee it's just a coincidence. That day I went to the mall to buy some interior decorations so I wouldn't have to think about you. Then I accidentally saw you and her walking into a jewelry store dedicated to engagement rings and wedding rings. Do you have anything more to say? All your promises and guarantees were lies. And you have the audacity to call me mentally ill? Okay, okay, listen, Taylor, it's true that I lied to you but not in the way that you're thinking. I knew it. I knew all along that you were being unfaithful and had feelings for your secretary. My suspicions were right. So you think hitting her today was justified, don't you? Or do you want to scold me for it? Is that what you want? Taylor, for the love of God, can you please stop texting and just let me explain? I never admitted to having an affair or having feelings for my secretary. The lie I was referring to was about last week when I said I went to my mom's house. I actually left there at 8 o'clock and went to see my secretary. So you're admitting there's something suspicious going on. What else would a guy and a girl be doing on a late night meeting other than going on a date? We're not dating. I went to see her because she introduced me to a friend who works in event planning for couples. I wanted to get her opinion on how to make the proposal special. But I don't have any female friends to ask, so I turn to her for help. What? Proposal? You mean... Yes, Taylor. I plan to propose to you. Yesterday, I asked her to help me choose a ring model and try on the ring because her finger size is the same as yours. I wanted to see how it looked before buying it. I never expected it to escalate into such a terrible situation. Are you telling the truth, Joey? Yes, Taylor, it's the truth. At this point, what else do I have to gain by lying? Yes, Joey. I'm saying yes. Yes for what? I agree to marry you. Please come over to my house and propose to me. Oh, I love you so much. I feel like the happiest woman in the world. <laughs> no more proposals, Taylor. I canceled everything. I realized that I couldn't stay in this toxic relationship for a second longer. You just beat an innocent person out of jealousy. By the time you know the truth, you don't even show any remorse or apology to my secretary, but only happy for yourself. You are really selfish. What? Cancel the proposal? Just for a little secretary? We just need to give her the compensation fee. Why would you make your wife apologize to a lowly little secretary? Joey, I know you love me the most. You're going to marry me, right? I used to love you, Taylor. 
I also thought a lot about whether it was because of me that you always felt unsafe. That's why I thought that proposing to you would be the thing I should do to show you a long-term commitment to me, so that you can feel comfortable and happy when you're with me. But it seems that things are not as simple as I thought. You've crossed all limits. Taylor, I can't bear this anymore. This relationship has become toxic and destructive. The incident with my secretary was the final straw. I can't continue to be with someone who resorts to violence and displays such extreme jealousy. I'm ending this, Taylor. It's over. Joey, please! I'm begging you to give me another chance. I promise I'll change. I'll do anything, absolutely anything, to make it right. I can't live without you. Taylor, it's not about making empty promises in the heat of the moment. Real change takes time and effort. We've reached a point where trust has been broken, and it's going to take more than words to repair it. I can't keep going through this cycle of jealousy, mistrust, and violence. It's not healthy for either of us. We need to break free from this toxic pattern. Joey, please don't leave me. I can't imagine my life without you. I'll do anything. I swear. I know I've made mistakes, Joey, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to fix them. Just give me a chance to prove myself, to show you that I can change. Taylor, love isn't enough to sustain a relationship. Trust, respect, and emotional well-being are equally important. We've been through so much, and it's clear that we both have issues that need to be addressed individually. I'm tired, emotionally drained. I'll go to therapy. I'll seek professional help. I'll do whatever it takes to address my insecurities and control my jealousy. Just please, Joey, don't give up on us. Taylor, it's not just about therapy or promises anymore. This has gone too far, and I can't ignore the pain and damage caused by our relationship. I need to put myself first for once. We both need time apart to heal and grow individually. Joey, I love you more than anything. Please don't walk away from me. I can't imagine my life without you by my side. Please, Joey, don't give up on us. The secretary's husband is a lawyer. He thought that Taylor had threatened his life. The lawsuit filed by the secretary's husband escalated, revealing more evidence of Taylor's aggressive behavior and causing further damage to her reputation. In court, Taylor's actions were deemed intentional and harmful, leading to serious consequences. The judge ruled in favor of the secretary's husband, holding Taylor accountable for her actions. She was found guilty of intentionally causing injury and ordered to pay significant fines and compensation to the victim. As the legal battle intensified, Taylor's personal and professional life crumbled around her. Her relationship strained, and her reputation was tarnished beyond repair. She had lost the love and trust of me, as well as her own self-respect. While I went through a difficult period, I found solace in focusing on my own personal growth and well-being. I sought therapy to heal from the emotional turmoil caused by my tumultuous relationship with Taylor. With time and self-reflection, I realized that I deserved better. I rediscovered my passions, reconnected with my friends, and built a support system that uplifted me. As I distanced myself from the toxicity of my past relationship, I began to thrive personally and professionally. Eventually, I found love again, this time with someone who shared my values and supported my dreams. Our relationship was built on trust, mutual respect, and open communication. I felt truly happy and fulfilled, knowing I had made the right decision to end things with Taylor.